Who was it? Robert Frost said, uh, Lord, if you'll forgive the little jokes I play on you, I'll forgive the big one you play on us. <laughs> <laughs> We, we spent considerable time on Thursday morning with uh, uh, Arm Brewster, that is a, a sound expert guy, getting all the sound worked out really well uh, for the church, using the keyboard that we just purchased, having the arrangement for the choir just right in the chancel. And then today, <laughs> it turns out to be too cold in there to worship, and we are here. Nevertheless, we are still here. Amen? Amen. And we worship together. Um, I have to tell you, one of the things I do on my ride in uh, on Sunday mornings is I listen to the traffic report. It always delights me to hear that the Beltway is clear. Uh, if you have some place to go this morning, it's a good day to go there. Good time to go there because the way is clear. So I think, oh great, the way is open. Then the next thing I listen for is there's a special report. There's a huge traffic jam at Westchester and Rockwell. Because so many people are trying to get into the Trinity Church party. So far that hasn't happened. But it's going to one of these days. Amen. It's a sign that we look for and we, uh, and we pray for it and hope for it. Um, we are to be that sign. Okay, we are to be the sign that this worshiping together uh, in order to gain the Spirit of God in our midst and to enrich ourselves in it, that is what it is that we're supposed to do. Um, I don't know about you, but in my front yard, my tulip bulbs are starting to come up. And I keep telling them, look, just because it hasn't snowed doesn't mean that it's almost spring. What are you guys doing up? And you know what they told me? I hope I'm not the only person here who speaks to the tulips. <laughs> what they told me is, well, we kind of poked our heads up and everything looks so dull and lustrous and a dull and plain out there that we decided we better get our heads stuck up to kind of improve the environment. I took Amen. that as a sign for us. Amen? Amen. It's our job. Get our heads stuck up. Let your light so shine before the world that many may see you and give glory to God. Follow Jesus and um, bring more light into the world. Amen? Thus Amen. we worship this morning, spirit and truth, that we might be like the coolest and let the light shine. Our liturgist for this morning is Bobby Bean. noticing that we were here in Fellowship Hall, we had copies of the Faith and Fellowship over here on the welcome table. So if you did not get one or you wish to have a hard copy, you certainly are welcome to take one as you leave today. Or uh, if you have email and did not receive a copy uh, by email, uh, please let Peggy Papish know and she would be happy to add you to the email list so that you get the Faith and Fellowship on via email. <clears throat> council meeting. This coming thir uh, Wednesday night, we're going to be having council meeting. <clears throat> it will be in the gathering place at 7 p.m. And at 6.15, we will be meeting in the chapel uh, for prayers before the council meeting. So if you're able to attend, we hope to see you at 6.15 in the chapel. Otherwise, we'll, uh, if you wish to come to the council meeting or you are a committee chairperson, we hope to see you on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock in the gathering room. We are glad that everyone is here uh, joining us this morning as we uh, worship the Lord. Also, we give special greeting to those that are joining our recorded service. It is a joy to share this experience with you whenever you may be tuning in. We hope uh, and love to hear from you. We like to hear your comments, your uh, questions on the prayer, uh, your prayer requests or your concerns. Um, 
And you can email us at trinitycatonsvillepastor at gmail.com if uh, you have any uh, requests or uh, praises that you would like to share with the congregation. This is the time for us to pass the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you. And also, also with you. you. May we pass that peace with one another. <laughs> Invite us um, as uh, now he's at the door to go ahead. We'll sing our song. This is the day the Lord has made. <laughs> I think it would be a great help in our entering into that day. I think a prayer in the morning is good too. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, uh, I, I lost track of the time, 220 years ago, uh, wrote this prayer. And he thought it's a great prayer to start the morning with. So let us begin our worship today as we pray together. New every morning is your love, great God of light. And all day long, you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us the desire to serve you, to live peacefully with all our neighbors, and to devote each day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Our theme for the first part of the service this morning, which will carry us into the readings from Revelation, uh, is the glory of God. So let us stand and we'll sing together our opening hymn, To God Be the Glory. Praise 
this morning comes from Psalm 145. Let us rejoice today in the glory of the Lord. Great is the Lord and most worthy to be praised. Let us Let's sing of the glorious splendor of God's majesty and, and tell of the wonder of God's works. We celebrate the abundant goodness of the Lord and joyfully sing of God's graciousness. The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. All of the works of the Lord give forth in praise. They tell of the glory of God's kingdom. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Would you join me in singing the hymn, My Tribute? to our Heavenly Father. Would you join me in the unison prayer of confession? God of grace and God of glory, your presence is filled with light, and your light is filled with compassion and mercy for all your people. You surely are the way to peace and assurance in our time. Come into the brokenness of our lives, which we confess to you, and with your healing love, make us holy man. Fill us, O oh Lord, with your perfect love. Cast out our fears, and rid us of all that separates us from others. And bind us together in a unity that shines with your glory. May your will be done in us as it is in heaven. Amen. Hear these words of assurance from the letters to the churches in the book of Revelation. Be faithful, and I will give you the crown of life. Would you join me in singing, There is a Bomb in Gilead, and we're going to be singing the first verse, the refrain and then the first verse.
has to describe that balm in Gilead. It wouldn't be an ointment that you spread on you, nor would it be some medication that you would digest. <coughs> For a lot of us, when we think about it, the balm is prayer. There is nothing more enriching in life, I think, than knowing that there are folks that pray for you. There used to be a woman in the church that I served, and I know I've mentioned this before, I'll never forget, Sandy her name was, a different Sandy, but nevertheless Sandy. <laughs> and every once in a while she'd come up to me and say, Reverend, I was praying for you this week. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, um, I, I would tell her right back, I felt it. I know you were there. It was a bomb in Gilead, it really is. So the prayer that we do for one another and for others is the bomb that we offer. So let us give our prayers today. Let's start with prayers of uh, thanks um, as um, we give thanks to God for all the blessing that God has given us in the past days. Um, for what shall we thank the Lord this day? Well, first, um, my brother was sick last week. He had a procedure on his neck and um, now it's him from the hospital, but continue prayers are needed because he's still recovering. We will do that. And you know, they don't keep you in the hospital as long as they should, so they shoo him out and say, go home. Go and do well. But still needs prayer. Say his name. Stan. Um, And today is my daughter's birthday. Oh, my daughter's birthday. You're working on your birthday. Yes. (laughs) Very thankful for that. And tomorrow is Sharon's birthday. Right. You, Sharon? Yeah, I'm not Sharon. It was just the happiest of birthdays yeah. for us both. Yeah. Oh, it's a wonder. It's a joy. Well, and I'm others. Sh- Pardon me? I'm not a gentleman, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really. I believe that we're 39 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but she's not even 39 yet. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I got news this last week from someone who's been watching our services, and she told me that it it reaches and touches her heart so much that she's going to be attending every Sunday oh, through our oh, recorded service. Oh, great. Um, God. She is, she's been pretty much stuck in her house and is able to get out, so this is a way that she can yeah. participate and be part of a, a group. Very so, that's great. That's very good. We're glad that, to Where's the camera? Person. That is exactly what we intend, <laughs> and we're so happy to hear that. Oh, we rejoice. We Amen. reach an average of 100 yeah. As you may have heard, um, <coughs> Michelle is telling us that about 100 people watch our recorded service um, um, every week. So what you do is start the worship flow going, right? And then there's three times as many people as there are here that will pick us up the rest yes. of the week. We give thanks to God. It's all done. It's all done. Uh, yes, Donna right? also has a birthday coming up this week. Who does? <coughs> Donna. Donna. Oh, Donna, sure. Yeah, and happy birthday to Donna. All right, whenever there's three birthdays, you got to sing happy birthday. Thanks for the, the way everybody jumped in this morning to help us uh, set up a worship in here. First, Lee, who, who leaped into the furnace room to find out that there was nothing we could do about it. <laughs> so good to know. And then for everybody else that uh, set up chairs and so forth. Uh, particularly Phyllis. Phyllis, we've always known that Phyllis can carry a tune. What we learned this morning is she can carry chairs. <laughs> so we give thanks. Well, where's Stan? Stan's favorite saying is, if we ain't flexible, we ain't nothing. So we flex into worship today. Let's uh, ask Bobby to share with us the prayer requests that have come. We have um, some prayers of sympathy we want to offer. We want to offer prayers of sympathy to the Upman and Wiles families for the loss of, of Jackie. We also want to offer prayers of sympathy um, to Dean uh, Lally, Jr., um, for um, the passing of his wife, Philomena. She passed this past week. 
So we offer not only um, prayers of sympathy for the Upman, the Wiles, and the, the Lolly uh, family, but uh, any other family who is suffering from, um, uh, yes? Um, you don't have to write it down, it's already on the bulletin. Um, John Wheeler, my brother-in-law, he just, he's just very limited to his wife texting me or something. <coughs> yeah, he could, could not get a lung transplant, he wouldn't permit it. So our prayers um, go with, uh, with John as he um, is making his last journey to our Lord. Um, we also offer prayers for Joe Vogel. That is uh, Mike Mushal's uh, friend who's having his leg removed during um, because of diabetes. So um, we think of Joe Vogel and all of his family and friends. We also uh, have prayer for Glovis' friend Ida. Um, she has several health issues, so we want to keep prayers for her. Um, we have continued prayers for Susan's si uh, sister, Cindy Iams, uh, who is recovering from uh, COVID. Uh, not only that, also all of uh, continued prayers for all of those who are suffering from COVID and any other health issues, whether they are uh, waiting for <coughs> tests or trying to arrange tests or waiting for those results. We certainly uh, offer prayers for, uh, for them. We have continued prayers for all those who have cancer or have been recently diagnosed with cancer or has known for some time that they have cancer. Um, some of those um, are undergoing treatments, whether it be radiation or chemo or both, or just waiting for their treatment plan to be um, arranged and, and decided upon. Are there any other joys or concerns anyone would like to, to share? Yeah, sure. yeah uh, we had prayed for Don from AA. He, he passed away. Don did? Yeah. Uh, uh, Don Keith. is his name. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, Keith family. And he and passed away, yeah. And, yeah. Um, Keith is family and friends. It was a short illness. Yeah. 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 Um, let's see. Others that we may in prayer this week? Dan? I thought it hasn't been that terribly cold for January. No. Except uh, this weekend, it is supposed to turn cold again. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's been a, a merciful winter. Let's wish for some snow. Yeah. Ask baby, let's wish for some snow. Yeah. Oh, she likes snow. I like snow. Yeah. What's that? She likes the snow. Oh, okay. Snow in Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> we had to eat four And we would pray for a our continuing effort to bring together clothing, looking particularly for blankets in these days uh, for those that are without homes and living on the street. Uh, it's astounding that folks um, have to live that way, but any kind of comfort we can bring in blankets would be the best right now. Um, let us also keep in prayers the families of there's so many people that were killed in mass shootings in the past week um, that the Lord... Um, bring comfort, but also that the Lord, in God's great mercy, would lead us out of this uh, hard. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Good and gracious God, our Creator, the one who makes every day, the one who calls forth the light for us to live in, and the one who ignites that light within us, we just uh, give you our thanks and our praise this day. We praise you for birthdays, Lord, for celebrations of life, for a time of, of looking back and saying it's been a good year, and for a time of looking forward and saying it's going to get even better. We give you thanks for that. We look to you, Lord, for those who uh, uh, suffer through the hardness of life. Uh, we pray to you for John, that you might be with him, that your spirit might just be rich with him and, and, and strengthen and comfort him and those who are around him. Lord, we, we pray for caregivers as well this week as, as we look to those who look after others. Uh, their faithfulness and their caring, Lord, is wonderful. It is also hard. And we pray that you would give strength and give uh, an abundance of love and uh, fill in, fill in empty spaces with your presence and with your love. We look to you, Lord, for those who uh, struggle forward, uh, going through treatment or waiting for treatment, that your 
touch may be upon them and heal them and give them strength. We look, Lord, because we know there are folks who have lost their lives in the past weeks and those around them just feel an emptiness and a, and a loss because they look around and those whom they love are not there anymore. And we just pray that your presence might help fill in that space, that your light might uh, sub in for that darkness and that your comfort may overcome that pain and that <coughs> you may be the brightness of life in the days ahead that enables folks just to keep stepping forward and finding their way. We pray to you, O oh Lord, and for your mercy and for your goodness. We know that this has been a particularly hard week and many lives lost to war, to violence, to what we call mass shootings. And we pray that uh, you be with the families of all those victims. You be with those who are still have the hopes of recovering from those incidents. And we pray you be with the societies of our world that we might yet figure out a way to sit down together and say, wouldn't it be good if we stop killing each other. Wouldn't it be good if we learn to love one another, even Lord as you love us. Lord, wouldn't it be good if we learn to love our neighbors as ourselves. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would bring this light into our lives. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would bring your light into every life and that your light may shine, shine, shine. In the name of Jesus we pray. As he taught us, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
one, verses 10 to 14 and 22 to 27. And in the spirit he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city of Jerusalem coming out of heaven from God. It has the glory of God in a radiance like a very rare jewel, like jasper, clear as crystal. It has a high, great high, a great high wall with 12 gates, and at the gates 12 angels, and on the gates are inscribed the names of the 12 tribes of Israelites. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city has twelve foundations, and on them are the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it. For the glory of God is its light, and the Lamb is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The Gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 16 to 19. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look! a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of the tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Continue to look at um, what the Lord has to say to us in those 21st and 22nd, that is the final chapters of the book of Revelation. Um, and the wonderful thing is, is that the imagery, as you heard this morning in the reading, the imagery just keeps getting better and better. It keeps getting brighter. It keeps having more jewels. It keeps having more gems. It keeps having more significant people gathering into that city. I mean, you heard it. We got all the tribes and the leaders of the tribes of Israel. All the apostles are there. And um, um, it's, it's a notable population. <coughs> it is the product of the writing of one whose name is John. <laughs> Very common name, John. And I believe that what is, we need to see John as a prophet. This is a book of prophecy in the New Testament. As a matter of fact, sometimes um, the book of Revelation is read as uh, a reading from the prophets uh, in the lectionary that were given. In any case, John fits into that pattern of being a prophet. That is, one who has kind of like come out of nowhere to have a significant word to say to people. One who may be and is among the people, but then kind of rises just to a little elevation enough above the people that he can present something to them. He comes, as one writer uh, mentioned, as um, an alarming poet um, who has a word to say. 
But he comes as one, and there are female prophets too, but in this case, John, he comes as one to whom has been given a vision from God, to whom God has showed something that no one else has seen yet. And the prophet's job is to show that to other people. The prophet has been shown this apparently because one of the things the prophet brings to the people is a deep, deep awareness of the liveliness of God and of the activity of God in our history. The prophet firmly believes that God is working among us. And I give a prophet a good deal of credit for believing that God is working among us in these days. At the same time, we would have to give the prophet a good deal of credit to believe that God is work, was working among the people in the days of John who wrote Revelation. This is still the first century of, the, of, the, of our era, and still we're within the first maybe 90 years, they think, of the creation of the Christian church. And the church wasn't nothing much but a group of people like us. And we might be the only ones in the whole city. And there was a question about how are we going to survive? Because we were quite different if we were that early church from the rest of the city because it was a pagan culture. Oh, maybe it's not so different then and now after all. <laughs> ah. But it was a pagan culture which was commanded to give bowing down worship to the emperor. Basic role in life. God is God and you're not. <laughs> right? And the emperor failed to follow that role and insisted that everybody see him as God because I am Domitian or Nero, whoever the, God, the emperor was at that time. And most people did this because there were penalties for not doing it. If you didn't do it, you were seen as hostile. You were seen as an enemy of the state because you didn't go and bow down to the emperor's thing. And we don't do that, do we? No, we don't do that because the emperor is not our God. Who is? God is our God. Yeah. But everybody else does it and they think there's something wrong with us if we don't do that. There are some other things we don't do either. But we won't go into all that because there was a significant enough difference between us and the others that the question was, would we be able to survive? Already some of our members had gone off and begun worshiping the emperor, even though they know they're not supposed to, but they needed a job in the government, so they went ahead and did that. Yeah, and we lost them. There are some others that were just in hiding, and they wouldn't come out and say we worship the Lord God, and we lost them. And the number kept getting smaller and smaller, and John was aware of that. God was aware of that. And God says something I'm going to do about that, and he gives John this vision. John, well, it takes him 22 chapters, well, it actually takes him 19 chapters to get to the best part of the vision. Because the first part has to do with a lot of conflict. It was like saying, God knows you're in the middle of a lot of conflict. But God also knows that coming out of that conflict is going to be a great new life for everybody. And so then, at the end, we're going to talk about chapters 1 through 19. Except to say that the culmination of all that is the fall of Babylon, which will be John saying to the people, that which is the center of the current culture is going to be um, destroyed, is not the right word, is going to fall. It will not last. It is not permanent. As great as Rome is, it's not permanent. Right? As great as we are as a nation, it's not permanent. As great as any nation is, is not permanent. Not only does history show us that, but God shows us that. And then the people would say, after they finished reading that 20th chapter, well, then what is permanent? <laughs> right? And, 
And John will say, well, let me show you what's permanent. There is a city that will come down from God. And it will be glorious. Oh, and then he goes on to describe this city. Describes it as a huge, 1,500 feet square. Actually, cubed. <laughs> it's described as 1,500 miles this way. That's like from here to what? Kansas City? Uh -huh. 1,500 miles that way. And 1,500 miles that way. It's a cube. Why is it a cube? You know? Uh -huh. <laughs> you need the moon. Huh? You need the room for all the people. We need a room for all the people. That's right. Uh, we need this to be really big because who's going to be in there? Not just the 12 tribes that 144,000 people do the multiplication, but according to Revelation 9 7, countless numbers of people are going to be in there. It's going to be a big room, a lot of room. And it's also a cube because the Holy of Holies was considered a cube. And that city becomes the Holy of Holies. What's the Holy of Holies? The Holy of Holies is where God dwells. And sure enough, John says, Right in the center of that city, in the midst of all that city, God is dwelling. And how do you know that? Well, he said you know that because the lights never go out. The light is always shining. Oh, you mean the sun just stops? No, no, not the sun, not the moon, but the light of God is there. God's dwelling is right there. And God is with the people. And the obviousness of God being there is so clear that you turn aside and your light is there. God is there. Huh? We, are, we are constantly aware of God's presence because of the wondrousness of the light. There are walls around this city. You heard that, right? High walls. Big walls. To keep people out or to keep people in? No. To do what walls do, and that is separate one people from another people. Uh, John was fully aware <laughs> that who lives in this city can only be people who would receive and live in the light of God. You can't have, you can't have unlit matches in this city. You got to have people that are full of light in the city, or light goes out. So he said, well, "I have a wall, and the people with the light—that is, the people who have learned to live according to the light of God—that is, the light that God showed us in Jesus, to love our neighbor as ourselves. Those folks will come in. Oh, and they'll rejoice in the light. Matter of fact, they will be the light." They are the light. We'll get back to that in a moment. But there are others outside who aren't the light. No, 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 no. They still have not figured out that we're not supposed to kill each other. We're not supposed to harm each other. We're not supposed to curse each other. We're supposed, and they have not figured that out yet. And so I'm sorry, they got to stay out. But notice, the other characteristics of the walls of the city are what? they got gates. There's gates to this city. These gates are useless <laughs> because they're always open, right? These gates are actually gateways so that any time any of those on the outside want to come into the inside to be a part of the light, they can do that. It's always open. We'll talk next week about God will do for those that come in wanting to be in the light. But the possibility is always there. And it wouldn't be hard to find one of those gates. There's 12 of them. You know C.S. Lewis? You know C.S. Lewis, the Chronicles of Narnia and all that? In one of his books, he says, look, it's like this. He said, um, there is this wonderful city that we're all invited to go and be a part of. Uh, but outside of that, there are these people that are not a part of it. And in the midst of all those people, he says, is a bus station. And on that, in that bus station, you can get on that bus anytime you want, and it'll drive you right into the city, and you can be a part of the light that is in there. All you have to do is decide to get on the bus. And C.S. Lewis says it's sad. How many people just can't make that decision? Just can't make that decision. 
I would suggest that we are among those who have decided to get on that bus, right? That we have decided that we want to be citizens of the light. Now, the interesting thing is, is to think about what is that light? Huh? What is that light? One of the things that light is, of course, is the glory of God. There's this Shekinah glory that the folks lived in the temple. Oh, by the way, did you hear that in the, uh, in the scripture this morning? There's no temple in that city. Uh, you don't have to show up on Sunday morning. I... <laughs> Why is there no temple? Well, for one, the temple had walls in it that divided people. Have you ever seen description of the temple? Where is this wall? The men go over here and the females go over here, right? And God said, no, 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 we're not having that. We're all one in Christ. Yep. And there was another wall that separated uh, the, the Jews from the Gentiles, that is us. And, you know what? and we don't need those walls anymore, so there's no temple. Besides, the temple is what? The temple for the Jews is where God dwells. Now, John says, God doesn't dwell in the temple anymore. God dwells in us. So in 1st and 2nd Corinthians, in both books, Paul tells the people who are part of the church in Corinth, he says, you are the temple of God. Huh? You, not meaning you and you, but you, all of us, together, are the temple of God because we are where God dwells. And you would say, oh yeah? How do you know? <laughs> right? I don't, always, I don't know about you, but I don't always feel like God is dwelling in me. Do you? I would love it. I would love it. Sometimes I kick God out. I don't need you today, God. I'm in charge of this. I got this. Other days I forget that God is dwelling in me. And go ahead and act stupidly anyway. Yeah? Other days it's just not clear enough for me to follow. I know, God, you're there, but I'm just not seeing it. It's hard. Hard. But the Bible said God dwells in us. That light is in us. So that light, huh? John 1. What did John 1? First chapter of the Gospel of John. John doesn't talk about a nativity of a little baby lying in the manger. John talks about like this. He says, there was this great thing called the Word, which is God's light, right? And God decided that God would make that Word into flesh. And that flesh is Jesus. And he said, and Jesus came and dwelt among them. And that light that that life brought is the light of all humanity. Jesus' life is the light of the world, right? Jesus' life is the light of the world. Everybody knows that. Uh, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Jesus would take the light that is living in him and place it in us. He said, he said this in, uh, I got it in my notes, now I can't remember. It's in uh, John, in the 8th chapter. Maybe it's in the 16th verse. You could Google it. Maybe I should look it up. <laughs> <laughs> 8.12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Follow me. Huh? How do you get this light in me that's in Jesus? Follow me and you will never walk in darkness because you will have the light of life. We are the light of the world when we follow Jesus. We are is it a conditional light? No. It is a it is a fact of life light. That's what I like about it. It's a fact of life light. When we follow Jesus, see, we step into his light. Think about it literally. Here's Jesus, us walking right behind him. Jesus is full of light. I bet you when he went into a town, people would say, there he is. You would know that right away. Let's go see him and see if I can get my brother healed. Let's go see him and see what he has to say. There's light all around him. So the deal was this. The 
closer we walk to him, excuse me, Jesus, I mean to bump into you, I just want to stay close. The closer we walk to him, the more of that light falls onto us. How do we do that? How do you do that? You wake up every morning and say, Jesus, I'm with you. I'm walking with you. I want to be with you. I want to understand you. And he says, well, have you read my word today? <laughs> I'm there in that word every day. Did you read that? Maybe you ought to review the Beatitudes today. Maybe you ought to read the story of the Good Samaritan again today. Maybe you ought to just sit still and pray the Lord's Prayer for a little while today. Things that we do to move us into following Jesus. And when we do, the light falls on us. Yeah? The light falls on us. It gets easier to love your neighbor. Huh? It, begun, it, it, be, it begins to be more of a preoccupation to love our neighbor. It begins to be more of a perception to withdraw from all of that that does not love our neighbor and only do that which does. And pretty soon, there is a light. And if you get enough of those people together, the light never goes out. The light never goes out. I like to believe. I think this is what John wants me to know. That it's okay if there's just a few of us, a little group, that's really working on following Jesus. And by the way, we've got to help each other with that today, don't we? When somebody does a good job of following Jesus, we need to... Yeah? That's good. You helped me see Jesus today. When somebody is not doing such a good job of following Jesus, I think it's okay to tell them. <laughs> Right? And it's okay to say that in love and to say, look, I think we can do it better this way. Yeah? We'll help each other. And when enough of us are together doing that, there's a light. And as we sustain each other in that, that light never goes out. It, it burns forever. Kingdoms, nations will fall, but the light of Jesus never goes out. And we spread that light. I like to think that the winter clothes that we gave to people spreads that light. The sandwiches that we make spreads that light. Any time we can show love to another person spreads that light. And maybe there's somebody that sees that light, wants to come from outside into the inside and say, I like that light. I really like that light. I think I'm walking that too. And the light gets a little bit stronger. Amen? Amen. 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 The gates never close. Mm -hmm. The light never goes out. The walls always glow with great splendor mm -hmm. to remind us it may be, what's the word, tricky, sometimes lonely, maybe sometimes um, Caring, and it may be all too easy to be tempted away from the life of following Jesus, but hang in there because that is the life that will prevail. And when everything else is gone, the life of Jesus will still be there, living in those who are following in his way. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, thank you for the city. Thank you for the great vision that John has given us. Thank you for the great hope that lives in that. And things are moving toward your great city being that in which we live and share life with all those who follow the one that say, love your neighbor as yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. As we profess and abide in the truth,
I'm calling it the Stewardship Sundays. I'm going to talk about our giving uh, in many ways. I just want to honor that uh, as I do every Sunday because the stewardship of, of this congregation is rich and strong and good and we're able to do much because of that. One of the things that we've been able to do, not only because of stewardship, because of imagination of some folks, is to uh, mold out of some classrooms that weren't being very well used and make, in, make out of them Two things, an office for our treasurer. Our treasurer, Lee, deserves his own office. You know anything? <laughs> for the work that he does for us, I mean, and all to have a couch and a widescreen TV and all that. <laughs> but it does have in it the equipment that he needs, the files. And also in that office is an office space for the working of our IT tech, Michelle Bean. Um, and we would invite you, if you would like, to go down the hall past the my office, don't look in there, in the church <laughs> office, and see the new um, treasurer's office. Um, it's kind of an open house without refreshments, but you're welcome to go down and see what we're doing. We're working on that room, the next room, which will be a Sunday school room, and we'll have a computer in it, and um, working in that regard, too. So many thanks for all that which we're able to do with the funds that we bring. Let us give thanks to God as we sing together our doxology.
bless us and keep us in his care. May the Lord allow the light of his countenance to shine upon us and fill us with his love. May the Lord grant to us the gifts of his spirit that the light of Jesus may live in us and that we may walk close enough to him that his light becomes ours as well. We look to you, Lord, ask your blessing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.